dear students uh, today we are going to start lecture number 1 part 5 uh, we were discussing introduction to uh, helminthology and host parasite relationship so uh, outlines of today's lecture are uh, we will continue uh, the introduction of helminthology and host parasite relationship L lecture or learning outcome of this lecture so after watching and listening to this lecture student will able to know about uh, helminthology and host uh, uh, parasite relationship so uh, we were uh, discussing parasitology and human welfare uh so in continuation to that uh, like uh, some people or some authorities they believe that infection with the juveniles of dog tapeworm which is uh, toxocara canis uh, this may be more common than pinworms infection in the united states and canada so according to the research some researchers uh, they think that uh, pinworm is not that much common in united states and canada as much as the dog tap the dog roundworm toxocara canis uh, which is uh, more important or that is more common in the people of united states in canada uh, however uh, the public is becoming more uh, conscious of some parasites like uh, for example there are some unicellular parasites Uh, such as uh, nemocystis uh, taxoplasma gundii and cryptosporidium uh, these are among the most uh, common opportunistic infection uh, in parasite in patients with acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or uh, not in case of aids maybe there are certain other reasons for the amino suppression for example organ transplants are uh, reasons for immunosuppression or uh, uh, sometime prolonged uh, steroid therapy may also cause uh, this immunosuppression so those people um, which are with the immunodeficiency or immuno uh, suppression or immuno compromised people they may be attacked by many opportunistics uh, in uh, like unicellular parasites Uh, which are very dangerous uh, sometime uh, life threatening sometime like nemocystis toxoplasma gundii uh, this also cause abortions and uh, th this is the cryptosporidium uh, now uh, as we think that uh, maybe these are not very much important parasites because they are opportunistic and most of the time they will take if uh, a person is immuno compromised or immuno deficient or immuno uh, suppress so even if they are uh, like uh, common these parasite uh, rarely cause serious diseases in people with uncompromised immune uh, response but uh, cryptosporidium among these the cryptosporidium was responsible for widely publicized diarrhea epidemic affecting 400 and 300000 people in malwiki uh, uh, wisconsin and 1993 so the uh, sale campaigns uh, for heartworm medications have increased public awareness of this dangerous pathogens of pathogen of dogs so uh, the picture of uh, this is in the next slide uh, stories on frog deformities reported all across the united states appeared in media including that the most important cause of this deformities was a trematode and uh, we are also witnessing emergence of new disease agents uh, some of which are parasitic or transmitted by arthropods as well as we are witnessing the development of resistance to drugs and long known pathogens so like Uh, you can see here the the, the, the pathogen the, of dogs which is very dangerous uh, in case of the heartworm and 
these stories of frog deformities and when it was like investigated so a trematode was responsible uh, it was one of them and uh, we are also witnessing thereby the emergence of new disease agents uh, though those may be uh, like belong to platyhelminths and some of which are parasitic uh, and they are transmitted by arthropods help by arthropods in their uh, then their transmission and as well as uh, uh, we are also witnessing the the, the drug resistance and very well known old parasites or pathogens like uh, um, uh, malaria uh, like the uh, the plasmodium and many other uh, pathogens so the, the first infection of uh, cyclospora uh, chitin uh, chitinensis uh, in human was diagnosed in 1977 and it was reported only sporadically between 1977 and 1996 uh in 1996 and in 1997 there were many outbreaks involving hundreds of people in the united states this uh, may be pronounced as cyclospora chitinensis chitinensis so in this picture uh, you can see the dirofilaria emitus the worm the heart worm in the right ventricle of an 8 year old irish setter uh, is extending up to it uh, up, up into the right and uh, left pulmonary arteries so this is the heart of uh, the 8 year old uh, setter irish Uh, setter belong to ireland the person who belong to ireland is called irish and this is the, the, the these worms you can see these in the heart of this old uh, setter as we uh, talked about uh, the drug resistance in the previous slide so uh, here uh, you can see that the most dangerous species of the malarial organism which is a plasmodium uh, falciparum has become drug resistant in many parts or in many uh, countries of the world and there are numerous reports of the drug resistance of plasmodium vivax also uh, so, so this is uh, this organism and many other they are becoming very dangerous by becoming resistant to certain drugs and uh, along with migra migration from tropical countries into the united states travel of us resident to tropical countries is increasing and uh, th this is not the story uh, only uh, related to united states this is the story of every country where immigrants they uh, like uh, visit and uh, the, the travelers of that country they uh, go to tropical countries and they they return to their own countries Uh, which increase the risks of uh, transmitting of infections from one area to another area many thousands of immigrants who are infected with the schistosomiasis or schistosomes malaria hookworms and other parasites uh, some of which are communicable currently live in the united states so this is again i will tell you that it's not only related to united states this is like the story of every country everywhere it may happen and uh, on the other hand service personnel they have returned from abroad often bring parasite infection or parasitic infection with them and you know uh, uh, there are uh, many workers or many service personnel who are working outside pakistan and when they return from different uh, or variety of countries of the world so they bring different type of infection with them Uh, in 1992 uh, 302 out of 1917 us peace corps volunteers in malawi were tested positive for schistosoma infection uh, so uh, there are uh, like uh, doc many documented cases of viable filariasis and strongulites 40 or more years after the initial infection so um, the infection may uh, may have occurred 
like 40 years ago but it will remain dormant and uh, may after 40 years maybe the infection will show viable symptoms uh, so such cases have been documented uh, a, a, a traveler may uh, become infected during a short stay in any airport and many pathogens find their way into the United States so this is not only the story again to the United States uh, uh, many passengers uh, or travelers uh, during their short stay anywhere uh, the, uh, may get infected and they may like bring their pathogen to their country or uh, uh, like as a stowaways on or in imported products so like uh, by smuggling uh, human beings to uh, various countries this is what stowaways mean or uh, imported products so through these uh, ways uh, uh, pathogens may be introduced into uh, a country uh, on the other hand the travel agents the travel agents and the tourist bureaus they are reluctant to volunteer information uh, on how to avoid the tropical diseases that a tourist is likely to encounter because they might lose the customer so uh, because of the fear of the losing of customers uh, these uh, travel uh, travel agents and the tourist bureaus they feel reluctancy and they do not like tell uh, uh, the customers how to avoid uh, tropical disease because they fear they might lose the customer and uh, small wonders then that exotic diseases confront the general practitioners with more and more frequency Uh, there are other uh, much less obvious ways in which parasite, uh, parasites affect humanity. Let's say for example, uh, 500 million people in the world have protein uh, energy malnutrition. 350 million have iron deficiency anemia. So malnutrition is exacerbated exacerbated mean that uh, made more violent or it increased both by population increase and by environmental degradation from 2 billion in 1927 the population of the world doubled to 4 billion in 1974 and it passed 6 billion in 1999 it is expected to exceed 8.9 billion in 2030 so meanwhile environmental degradation such as erosion continues to decrease the available supply of cropland and increasing scarcity of resources contribute to violent conflict in the war so the contributions of parasites to malnutrition are important but are underestimated because of underreporting. Hospitals uh, usually uh, list what appears to be the most obvious cause of death, but most patients have multiple infections that have contributed to their uh, disease state. Now, even where food is being produced, it is not always used efficiently so cons considerable uh, caloric energy is wasted by fevers caused by uh, parasitic infections how like uh, heat production of the human body increases about 7.2 percent for each degree rise in fahrenheit so a single acute day of fever caused by malaria requires approximately 5000 calories or in energy demand equivalent to two days of hard manual labor to extrapolate in a population with an average diet of 2200 calories per day if 33 percent of the people had malaria 
99% had a warm burden and 8% had active tuberculosis. So there would be an energy demand equivalent to 7,500 tons of rice per month per million people in addition to the normal requirements. So that is a waste of 25% to 30% of the total energy yield from grain production in many societies. Humans, uh, humans create many of their own disease conditions because of high population density and subsequent environmental pollution. Population shifts from rural to urban areas commonly overload water and sewage capabilities of even major cities. Uh, industrialization has first priority in developing countries with reduction in population being neglected. Night, uh, night soil is often used as fertilizer on food crops. Uh, night soil is uh, an alternate word used for human fecal material. Uh, millions of people, especially children, die each year from diseases uh, that could be prevented with proper sanitation facilities. Parasites are also responsible for incredible financial loss. Malaria, for example, is usually a chronic, debilitating, periodically disabling disease. In situations where it is uh, prevalent, the number of hours of productive labor lost uh, multiplied by the number of malaria sufferers yields a figure that can be charged as loss and the manufacture manufacture of good goods and the production of crops or in the earning of a gross national product uh, this is uh, the picture of uh, the use of uh, night soil uh, it's a, it is a uh, logical use of the human feces and urine uh, it is applied to the vegetable garden, uh, a technique practiced in many of uh, much of the world. Although sometimes it is controlled by government regulation, it, is, it still serves as a significant means of distribution of eggs of some helminths and certain protozoan cysts. Because you know that the eggs and the cysts of uh, the helminths and protozoan cysts, they are uh, like found in the human fecal materials. So if you, you if uh, one use uh, this night, night soil uh, uh, for uh, as a fertilizer for the vegetable garden, so uh, it may um, uh, the people may become infected by using those vegetables from that garden. Nations uh, that import goods from countries uh, infected with malaria, schistosomiasis, hookworms and many other parasitic diseases pay more for these products than they would have the products being produced without the burden of disease. Plant parasites uh, further weakens the productive capacities of all countries. Like national and international efforts to increase productivity and standard of living in less developed countries sometimes accidentally increase parasitic disease. Uh, for example, schistosomiasis in Egypt, it increased after the construction of Oswin High Dam on Neil River. And in the same way, smaller dams for drainage and agriculture have promoted transmission of schistosomiasis, onchocerciasis, recanculiasis and malaria. Why? Because you know the water uh, the stagnant water it uh, act is like uh, 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 breeding places for uh, mosquitoes uh, for uh, uh, snails these uh, damp areas are like good habitats for uh, snails where schistosoma and many other uh, parasites complete their life cycle in, in para and mosquitoes where malarial plasmodium complete their life cycle so with construction of these dams uh, the drainage uh, or small dams for the drainage and agriculture had increased the transmission of or promoted the transmission of these uh, disease. Uh, 
diseases. The World Bank uh, loaned Brazil, Brazil funds to pave highways into the Amazon region to settle poor urban workers for farming. Despite contrary advice from their own agriculture experts and what happened? This action of the World Bank and government of Brazil produced an increase in malaria and spread of malaria to new centers when the migrants returned to the cities after their farms failed. An important role of parastologists together with of other medical discipline is to help achieve a lower death rate. However, it is imperative that this reduction be matched with a coexisting lower birth rate and higher quality of life. And if not, we are faced with the parastologist's dilemma date of sharply increasing a population that cannot be supported by the resources of the country. George Harrer, president of the Rocket Filler Foundation, observed, it would be a melancholy paradox if all the extraordinary social and technical advances that have been made were to bring us to the point where society's sole preoccupation would be of necessity become survival rather than fulfillment. Herod's paradox is already a fact for half the world. Parastologists have a unique opportunity to break the deadly cycle by contributing to the global eradication of communicable diseases while making possible more efficient use of the earth's resources. Uh, next we will discuss parasites of domestic and wild animals. So both domestic and uh, wild animals are subject to a wide variety of parasites. Although wild animals are usually infected with several species of parasites and they rarely or seldomly suffer uh, they seldomly or rarely suffer mass massive deaths or epizootics. Epizootic is the widespread, uh, the temporary uh, prevalence or widespread of a disease uh, among uh, animals. Because of the normal dispersal and territorialization of most uh, species. So, uh, seldomly we will, uh, you will see massive deaths, uh, massive deaths or epizootics in wild animals. However, domesticated animals are usually confined to pastures or pins years after years, often in great number, so that uh, the parasite eggs, the larvae and cysts become extremely dense in the soil and the burden of the adult parasites within each host become, uh, becomes devastating. Uh, pins, or, uh, pins mean uh, वो जो एक लकड़ी होती है जिसके साथ या कोई एक हुक होता है जिसके साथ हम जानवर को बांधते हैं तो उसको कहते हैं लेट्स डिस्कस सम एग्जांपल्स द प्रोटोजोआ नोन एज कॉक्सीडिया इट्स अ वेरी वेल नोन पैरासाइट थ्राइव अंडर क्राउडेड कंडीशंस नाउ दे मे कॉज अप टू 100% मोर्टेलिटी इन पोल्ट्री फ्लॉक्स 28% reduction in the wool of sheep and 15% reduction in weight of lambs. Infection in poultry are controlled by the costly method of prophylactic uh, drug administration in the feed. But unfortunately, coccidia have become resistant to one drug after another. So again and again, it is becoming the, the, the coccidia they are uh, becoming resistant to various drugs. Many other examples are there, but thanks to the continuing efforts of parastologists around the world uh, who identify, uh, whose identification and life cycles of most parasites of domestic animals are well known. This knowledge uh, in turn exposes weaknesses in, uh, bio in the biology of these pests and suggests possible methods of control. 
Similarly, studies of the biochemistry of organisms continue to suggest modes of action for chemotherapeutic agents. We should keep in mind, however, the control of parasites in domestic animals may be a considerable ecological hazards. Less can be done to control parasites of wild animals, but most wild animals can tolerate their parasitic burden fairly well, but they will exceed when they are crowded and suffering from malnutrition. So in these two conditions, they will become dangerous, just as will domestic animals and human beings. Example. Uh, and there is another important uh, aspect of animal parasitology, uh, which is transmission uh, to humans or parasites that is normally found in wild and domestic animals. So this is another issue and such uh, resulting diseases are normally known as zoonosis. Uh, according to uh, the WHO, uh, zoonosis uh, as a disease or it's a parasite which, which can be transmittable between a vertebrate host and a human being. So uh, diseases or parasites uh, which are transmittable uh, or which transmission may occur between a vertebrate host and a human being is known as zoonosis. Uh, many uh, zoonosis uh, or zoonotic disease are rare and they cause little harm uh, but some are more common and important to public health. Uh, for example, uh, trichinosis. Uh, uh, it is a serious disease uh, caused by a minute nematode known as trichinalia, trichinalia species. So, uh, trichinosis, uh, trichinosis uh, is a very uh, serious disease and it is caused by a nematode. Uh, these worms exist in uh, several uh, salvatic cycles that involve wild animals and in urban or domestic cycles chiefly among rats and swines. So uh, people uh, become infected when they enter the cycle. How? Such as by eating undercooked bear or of. Another zoonosis is echinococcosis or hydrated disease. Uh, in, in which humans uh, accidentally become infected with juveniles, uh, juvenile tapeworms when they ingest eggs from dog feces. Uh, another uh, important uh, zoonosis is uh, uh, related to Toxoplasma gundai, which is known as Toxoplasmosis, which is normally a parasite of felines and rodents, is now known to cause many human birth defects. We uh, recognize new zoonosis from time to time. So it's uh, like to time to time uh, scientists, they are discovering uh, new zoonotic diseases. A Lyme disease as a bacterial infection transmitted by ticks was long present in deers and white footed mice, but not in human beings. But what happens? Uh, frequent transmission to human began only in 1970s. And it is the obligation of parastologists to identify, understand and suggest means of control of such diseases. Uh, the first step is always proper identification of the parasite and description of the existing parasites so that other workers can recognize and refer to them correctly by name in their work. So it is very important, the identification and description. Uh, Thousands of species of parasites of wild animals are still unknown and will occupy the energies of a taxonomist for many years to come and to identify them. Unfortunately, uh, the number of parasites it is de described each year has been declining. Uh, probably it is because of the decline in the young taxonomist being trained. Uh, aside from the, uh, their role as uh, causative agents of diseases, parasites provide us with, a, all, with an almost unlimited supply of fascinating and challenging problems in ecology and evolution. Uh, presence of a parasite species with a complex life cycle demonstrates 
explicitly date uh, intermediate host occupy an area and date an ecological relationship exists between host and parasites. So parasites also may be one of the factor along with predation and abiotic events that function to regulate host population. And finally, virtually every species of animal is parasitized by at least one or other species. So thus much of the overall biodiversity uh, found in any ecosystem can be accredited to parasitism. Uh, biodiversity is essential to human survival and quality of life and the parasites they bear can tell us much about the biology and evolution of the host. Parastology for fun and profit. In addition to having medical and economic importance, the study of parasites is fascinating and one can pursue such study as a career. Most parasites are products of a long evolution as symbionts and are thus exquisitely adopted for life within the body of another organism. There are more parasites than living, free living organisms in the world and is an indication of the success of parasites. So it indicates the succession or the successfulness of a parasitism. Of parasitism. From, a, from a biological perspective, they are interesting, beautifully adapted and intricate organisms. So uh, despite our effort to alleviate uh, human affliction with the most serious pathogen, uh, pathogens, we should appreciate that parasites are a huge part of the nature. And whether or not you become a carrier parastologist or healthcare professional, uh, your study of parasite will be an adventure. Uh, now, uh, careers in parastology. So, parastology offer an area of interest for every biologist. Uh, the field is, a, is large and uh, cover so many approaches and subdivisions that anyone who is interested in biological research can find a lifetime career in parastology. It's, it's a very uh, vast and huge field where every biologist can find their way. So it is a satisfying career because each bit of progress made, however small, contribute to our knowledge of life and to the eventual conquering of diseases. As an all a scientific endeavor, every major breakthrough depends on many small contributions made, usually independently by individuals around the world. A previously little known parasite suddenly become life-threatening infections in AIDS patients like toxoplasmosis. Had their ident identifications and life cycles been better understood, we would have saved much expense and time in recognizing the complex aspects of AIDS. The training required to prepare a parastologist is rigorous. Uh, modern researchers in parastology are well grounded in physics, chemistry and mathematics as well as biology from the subcellular through the organism, uh, organismal and population levels. They must be grounded uh, firmly in medical entomology, histology and basic pathology. So, depending on their interest, they may require, require advanced work in physical chemistry, immunology, molecular biology, genetics and systematics. Such intense training is understandable because parastologists must be familiar with the principles and practice that apply to over a million species of animals. In addition, they need uh, thorough knowledge of their fields of speciality. Most parastologists has a PhD or other doctoral degrees, but people with master's or bachelor's degree have made many contributions and undergraduate working on uh, independent study projects or honors. These have also uh, contributed. 
Once they have received their basic training, astrologists continue to learn during the rest of their lives. Even after retirement, many remain active in the search for the sheer joy of it. The astrology indeed has something for everyone. These are, uh, th this is the reference, the uh, foundation of the astrology at the edition by Gerard Schmidt. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Take care.